and I say it is the most important invention of the last thousand years. You know, when children make towers with blocks, they learn about structure and stability. When they make pictures with finger paint, they learn how colors mix together. But most important, they learn about the creative process. Programming helps you organize and express and share your ideas. When kids create programs, they can make their own stories and animations and games. And in that way, they can take their ideas and share it with the world. So it's not just a matter of learning a technical skill. They can develop their reasoning, have new ways of understanding problems in the world and solving problems. When they collaborate, they can do more than either person can do on their own. So if we really want to help people become creative, we need to shift the way we think about thinking so we don't see it as just a singular solitary activity, but more of a social activity. Oftentimes, when people think about computer programming, they think of it as a technical skill or a mathematical skill. But actually, I see it different. I think programming is most like learning how to write. When you learn how to write, you learn how to express your ideas and share your ideas with others. I see programming the same way. Programming helps you organize and express and share your ideas. When kids create programs, they can make their own stories and animations and games. And in that way, they can take their ideas and share it with the world. So it's not just a matter of learning a technical skill. But when kids learn to program, they can develop their voice to share their ideas with the world. They can develop their reasoning so that they can you know, have new ways of understanding problems in the world and solving problems. They can feel that they are able to create things in the world. When we developed our Scratch programming language, we intended it for all children from all backgrounds of all learning styles, because we think it's important for all children to be able to express themselves. It's not just for children who are going to go on and become professional programmers, but most children won't grow up to become programmers or computer scientists. But we think all children from all backgrounds will benefit when they learn to program because they'll develop a new way of expressing their ideas. Those are skills that are important for everybody, regardless of whatever job they grow up for. So I think that we need to make sure not to just see programming as a narrow technical skill, but a way that you develop a wide range of skills that are useful in all parts of your life. And it wasn't just a school for young children, it was a different approach to learning. And I say it is the most important invention of the last thousand years. When Friedrich Freubold invented the first kindergarten, back then, most education was just by a teacher lecturing to students who wrote down word for word. He knew that wouldn't work for five-year-olds. He knew that five-year-olds needed a more interactive approach to learning. So he created the first kindergarten with lots of different materials and toys and tools to let kids engage with the world, interact with the world, and to learn through exploring and experimenting. You know, when children make towers with blocks, they learn about structure and stability. When they make pictures with finger paint, they learn how colors mix together. But most important, they learn about the creative process. Unfortunately, the rest of school doesn't continue in that way. Kids spend too much time in school sitting at their desks, filling out worksheets, listening to lectures. So they no longer develop as creative thinkers. I think one of the challenges in helping cultivate creativity is that it's very difficult to measure creativity. I think rather than trying to, you know, you know, to measure the things that are easiest to measure, we should focus more on the things that we value. I think to succeed in today's world and to be happy in today's world, the creativity and collaboration 
are some of the most important things, the most important abilities and capabilities that we need to develop. And then think more about what are the real goals of education? A few years ago, I was talking to Chen Jining, who at the time was president of Tsinghua University. He's now mayor of Beijing. And as he looked into the educational system, he saw there was a problem that too many students were just focused on getting good grades and succeeding in their courses. He said his university, Tsinghua, was full of those students, that they had done well in school, they got good grades, they'd done well in their exams, so they got into a very good university. But he said there was a problem. Many of them were not very creative. If you gave them a new situation, they didn't know how to address it. They just knew how to solve the problems they were already taught. He talked about those students as A students. They were students who got A's in their, in their tests, but they didn't know how to come up with new ideas in a new situation. He said that we needed to support a new type of student that he called X students. X students were willing to take risks to try new things. Rather than just answering the questions of the textbook, they knew how to define new types of problems. Rather than just following rules and instructions, they were defining their own goals and strategies. So he said to succeed in today's world, it's important to be more of an X student. Because the world is changing so quickly, we need students who are willing to take those risks, try new things, define their own goals and their own strategies. So he set it as a goal for Tsinghua, and he said the whole education system should set it as a goal to support the development of X students, not A students. Although he was talking about China, I think that's true all around the world. When people think about thinking, they sometimes think about the great Rodin sculpture of the thinker, who's just sitting there you know, in contemplation by himself. But I think that's a really bad image of creative thinking. I think we need to have people learn with and from one another. When people work together, they can get inspiration. When they see what other people do, they get inspired. When they collaborate, they can do more than either person can do on their own. So if we really want to help people become creative, we need to shift the way we think about thinking so we don't see it as just a singular solitary activity, but more of a social activity. I see tinkering as a cross between making and playing. When you're making something, there are many different ways of making things. You could come up with a plan, follow the directions, make something, and you're finished. Or you could make something in a playful way, where you're experimenting and trying new things and constantly revising your strategies and your approaches. Because things are changing so quickly, we can't just come up with a recipe for doing things. We have to constantly be experimenting and trying new things. So I think the old approaches of just plan it out, execute it, and you're done might seem efficient. So I think tinkering is an approach to solving problems and designing and making things that's suited to our times. We need to give children enough freedom to be able to follow their fantasies, but enough structure so they can make their fantasies come alive. Teachers and parents, they shouldn't just be delivering instruction and information to children, telling their children exactly what to do. Allow children to explore and experiment, but also give them the support and guidance they need to be able to make progress on their explorations. I think one of the problems with today's education is that too many things are separated by different barriers. The different disciplines are separated. Math class is separate from science class, which is separate from language class. In fact, we should be learning all those things together, and they each can reinforce the others. Similarly, we are the, the that they're segmented in their barriers of time. We slice up the day in a 45-minute period and another 45-minute period. In fact, people are going to learn better if you can learn over longer periods of time, barriers between age, that 
second graders are separate from third graders, separate from fourth graders. We think that people can learn more if they work with people of different ages and different experiences. There's also barriers between inside of school and outside of school. Uh, and I think there's a lot of benefits from people from the community who could help in school and children in schools should learn more about the community. So I think the most important trends in school are to remove those barriers and let learning be something that cuts across all those barriers. I think that's the future where their education will be going. Hi, I'm Mitch Resnick. I'm a professor of learning research at the MIT Media Lab. And I recently wrote a book called Lifelong Kindergarten, Cultivating Creativity Through Projects, Passion, Peers, and Play. And it's great to be joining you on EcoTalks.